The first item of business is the approval of minutes, and I'm afraid to tell you that I do not have the minutes available to uh, have you review and approve, so we'll move on to item number two, which will be our re a review of the payment application certificate for payment number 12. Um, I'll be up to uh, George and, and, and David Crabanzola to speak to. Gentlemen? <clears throat> okay, we're, um, you know, currently, um, the payment is like a million five sixty one three thirty nine. Um, you know, we got the Mason, um, you know, billing. I would say probably by the end of uh, next week, he, he should be uh, pretty near complete with his uh, metal fabrication. There's WI. Um, Looking in the building, you know, doing some miscellaneous carpentry, you know, plywood on the electrical or MDF closet walls. Uh, Greenwood industry, that was just a little for some flashing. Uh, spray fireproofing, you know, that's the fireproofing of the steel. He's uh, he's complete now. Um, you know, we have aluminum entrances. That's the uh, windows and, you know, storefronts, curtain walls. But, um, you know, he's been working on the Uh, George, I had a question uh, concerning what's on the first page, which is the uh, retainage. Um, let's see, under retainage, it says, and of course, I presented to the Board of Finance, it was a 5% retainage. It turns out to be a 6.2% retainage on completed work. Has that varied? Or is that? Yeah, it, it's, um, that includes the, um, there's a 2% that we hold uh, a retainage, if you will, for the set aside plans from chro so when the when the trade contractors get their um set aside of plans approved from chro then they get paid the the two percent so you, you'll see on some of these trade contractors applications um i don't have it they'll they'll have the, we hold seven percent and then when the uh when their set aside plan gets approved then we'll release the two percent, and then it'll go down to five percent. So that's what you see. So that's kind of very. So there was, you know, a couple of the trade so contractors that that five percent sort of is like the general rule, other than the CRO thing. Army. Okay, because I was just confused, but I happened to pick up that detail. Yeah, yeah I okay. think the the retainage amount is I think set by. Are the there state any other? Right? Well, the retainage is like five, and then there's two percent for the set aside right. plan from CHRO. But then, then the okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, Gypsum Are there boards. any other questions or points you want to make? Yeah. yeah. And then we have Does the. Anybody uh, on the committee have a question? some allowances so, you know the gross is a million six oh two three oh two and then the um you know the payment we got one million five sixty one three thirty nine no I understand the math I was just asking I saw that six point two percent that's what made my question okay. all right Anybody in the committee have any other questions or uh, about this particular payment application? Nope. Hearing none, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the uh, payment application number 12 as presented to the amount of $1,561,339.24. Is there a second? I'll second it, Kip. I have a second from Duke. Is there any more discussion concerning this payment application? Hearing none, everyone in favor, either raise your hand or say aye. 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 Those opposed, those opposed, please say nay. Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion is passed. Thank you. Uh, the next item of business is to review the uh, progress report, this one for December. And I hope we, you can take us a little bit into what's been going on in January as well, George. Yep. Um, you know, financials, uh, 
the um, completion dates, those have not um, changed. Um, you know, substantial completion academic, uh, May 14th, um, landscaping the middle of or May 2023, and then, you know, assembly. We have our percentages of complete. Um, you know, then. Currently, our contingencies of a million fifty-four two fifty-seven from a million one forty-three. That's the difference. There is um, primary the primary electrical feed, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, later. But you know, the, the contingencies, the CMR contingent construction contingency is still, you know, healthy at you know for this point at a million. Um, rather than tracking the allowances for the trades, um, you know, we're about 77,000, uh, and um, you know, the balance is about 333,000 on the trade allowances. Um, uh, George, could you stop on that one just for a second? I was having a hard time understanding the negative number on, on the column of uh, uh, estimates versus the uh, positive number on the cost uh, estimate, the 77. In other words, we've actually right. of the trade of the trade contingencies, we've spent 77. Correct. Yeah. So, so the negative is actually the, what the original allowance was. So, for instance. Like um, like OWI on the allowance 1.06B, the original was, and we we put it in the, our system as a negative. So the original was, you know, twenty twenty thousand for the allowance, and then we 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 uh, take it out, you know, as a positive um, when we use up that allowance. So so the two eight twenty one is what we used, and then the negative is is the balance. And again, this, th these are the allowances that are within the subcontractor's contract. These are not the, the, the overall system allowance that we put in place at the beginning. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. These are the, um, yeah, these are, they are in, in the, um, in the trade contractor's allowances in their, in their, their allowance, in their contract. So it doesn't really right. move the GMP at all. Correct, but it was just, it was something I think that Rusty and Nick wanted to make sure that the committee saw on a regular basis. Thank Correct. you. Yeah. Because it's, it's another, it's another, if you will, reserve bucket that we can use uh, when there are overruns in any one area, provided they, they fall within the specific uh, subcontractor's uh, uh, contract. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. This month, we've had five RFIs issued, um, three proposal requests, uh, three ASIs. Um, these are the PCOs that are, um, you know, in for review. You know, various various stages, um, and then um, schedule activity revisions. There's really none I I made on the schedule. Up, um, any revisions of uh, procurement issues um you know nothing specifically right now but you know available materials you know it does continue to be challenges um however we work very closely with slam and providing you know substitute manufacturers for or equals you know for drywall paint those are the two items you know most current um you know they they might not have the particular manufacturer that was approved available, but they have an alternate manufacturer that's an equal. So we're just, that was both paint and drywall. Um, and then, you know, with this new surge, you know, the manpower, it's, you know, it's, um, you know, some days we might have, uh, you know, guys on site and then, you know, some guys might have to be quarantined. So it's, it's, you know, becoming more of a challenge, but right now it hasn't really, affected or impact the schedule overall you know it's more of a shell game 
you know, as far as both the manpower and, and the materials. George, do they have to, uh, do the subcontractors have to uh, quarantine according to state guidelines or is it, is it more flexible within their own group? No, I think they pretty much follow the, like the state guidelines. Um, you know, like for instance, you know, Lockheed, it wasn't on this job actually, but you know, on another project, one of his guys tested positive. So the, so the whole crew had to, you know, go for, you know, quarantine for, I believe it's five days now. Um, and then that, you know, impacts us because, you know, we we're looking for more manpower and, and those kind of things, but they, they pretty much follow the, the state guidelines. Okay. Let's hope we get through this pretty quickly because that could be a real problem. Yeah. I mean, so far we've been, you know, staying ahead of it, you know, uh, but it's, I think we, you know, maybe in another month or so, if you, you know, listen to the, the news, you know, we'll probably be ahead of it more peaking sooner than later. Um, as far as the summary, uh, site work, continue installation of retaining walls, both in the southeast corner and um, you know, they've been working in the uh, courtyard, you know, forming the steps, and now they've since finished that, and they're they're working on the smaller retaining walls up adjacent to the steps. Um, academic wing, uh, we've completed all the MEP inspections on the lower level, and we've started the sheetrock and tape, um, you know, parts uh, C and B. And then uh, Monday, um, the painter is going to start, you know, priming and first coating, coating the walls next week. So. And it's warm uh, enough in the building to do that. Pardon me? I say, and it's warm enough in the building to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you know, the two heaters have been running. Uh, the one on, on our side, you know, we built an enclosure around it. It, you know, kept the noise down quite a bit. And you know, with the two heaters, um, you know, we've been monitoring the the heat, and you know, we're, you know, there's hot and cold spots, but we've been maintaining the 50 degrees pretty much throughout, so it's been working out pretty well. Okay. Um. And then um, on the on the upper level, uh, we're continuing roughing in ductwork, electrical, fire protection. And actually, on the um, elevated slabs on the main level, uh, today we're going to have our uh, MEP in wall inspections. And then, you know, after that, we'll start um, insulating the walls and then, you know, should be able to start sheetrocking uh, next week as well on the, on the main level, on the elevated, on the elevated decks. And then on the slab on grade, which is pretty much like the ELP room. Uh, we're still, you know, doing overhead rough-ins and, um, you know, probably start framing walls, um, you know, next week after the overhead. Um, and then storefront windows, actually part C, they're, they're uh, pretty close or they are kind of complete and they've been putting in the storefront windows, you know, glazing and everything and that actually helps out quite a bit with the with the heat you know you can definitely tell the difference where we have the windows versus the plastic on the on the windows uh part b is kind of pretty much the same as part part c um and, you know we're continuing you know with the storefront windows and uh, we got a delivery of curtain walls um the beginning of the week so we'll be starting curtain wall installation, you know, towards next week, uh, starting in the courtyards, I'm trying to wrap that up. Uh, part A, which is kind of the offices on the on the main level, um, we started roughing and duct work. Um, actually, that's pretty near complete. We've been we started the, the stud framings and um, store frames, and then also the exterior brick, you know, kind of as I mentioned earlier. Um, we're right now doing the exterior brick on the you know the front part uh, and should be I would say pretty 
pretty close or should be complete middle of next week, Wednesday, Thursday next week with the with the exterior brick brickwork. Um, then, uh, like I said, schedule wise, uh, nothing's um, really changed as far as sequencing or or you know any of the the activities. You know, still tracking for substantial completion the academic in the middle of middle of may um and then you know pictures uh, this is actually main level main level b you know looking looking north um, yeah we had our we had our tour i guess most people were able to make the tour was it the 22nd of uh uh, December anyway, which was a pretty good tour in terms of looking over everything. Yep, that's the, the main level B. Another shot. Then we, yeah, we've just <clears throat> been roughing in and, and all that. Um, you know, this is kind of looking at the north as well. We're on the courtyard side. This is the courtyard over there. Um, then yeah, you can see this is a heater now. We've since had a you know we put a enclosure around it. It's cut down on the noise you know quite a bit. Um, that's you know the south side um, the exterior, the west. That's the main kind of the main entrance. So since all this brickwork is done right now, and then they're, you know, what they have left is this side, and then around the, you know, around the corner, you know, is, is what remains. I mean, that's the, the main entrance. This will all be curtain wall, eventually. Um, and then that's another look inside the courtyard. Uh, these windows have been since um, installed, and the, you know, the glass in. And actually, this week we started forming, and this is an elevated slab. So this this is actually a, a door. Actually, doors below, but this is an elevated slab for the, uh, for the courtyard, which we started forming uh, this week. And that's another look at the courtyard, kind of above. This is like the ELP wing, right? This uh, below. And we do have a plan of getting the machine out of the courtyard, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I would have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Was, I don't want to see a giant crane being brought in, please. <laughs> yeah. Kip, it's a helicopter. Oh, even better. <laughs> Playground equipment. Come on. <laughs> I was say, maybe you should just leave it there for Mike Lynch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Mike would have too much fun with that. Yeah. He's liable to break something. <laughs> no, I'll definitely break something with that. We don't want that. <laughs> Good teaching tool. <laughs> hey Luke, we're talking about working with the kids, right? Never too soon to learn how to piece of uh operate a piece of equipment. I don't know about that. <laughs> Pick with your liability insurer. Okay. That's pretty much it. If anybody has any any questions? I I just had some questions about the page of PCOs under review, just to know where we are we are here. Um I, I'm not sure what page number that is. I think it's number sixteen. Yeah, just went by it. Page 16. 16. Or is that 18? My eyes are getting bad. Right there. Right there, there. It is. You had it. Right there. Up. Oh. Next page. Oh, that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, are we are we getting close to? Uh, uh, we we have numbers on all of these now. We yes, have we estimates have on these, and it's um, 
like I said, they're in various stages. So they're all in the, you know, they're included in the, um, you know, the financials. So they, they've all been captured. Uh, the first two, those are um, at the trades for, uh, you know, for some responses. I believe Slam had some questions. Well, actually, the sewer uh, invert elevations, um, that's back at uh, at Sean's lawn. Um, you know, been directed just to uh, just to price the uh, revisions as shown on the drawing. None of the rework of communication conduits. Um, we slams had some questions that um, needed a response. The alertist that's actually been um, that's been accepted. Um, right. It was it was pulled from uh, from Ferguson Electric. You know, and and the Lurtis actually gave us a turnkey price right. to do all the work, so we assigned it to Shea, and uh, that that's been done. And then we asked um, Ferguson to provide a credit for the um, base bit cabling and, and all of that. Uh, platform stair blocking that's we in the response on OWI, so that's um, a North Gym Wall, the Gymnasium North Wall revisions. Um, yeah, submitted the PCO. I did get comments from, from actually Nick and and uh, Jeff and Slam. So um, I sent those off to the trades. It was um, on the window sills and Lockheed's credit. I think were the two uh, two, um, okay. two responses. And then the temporary remove temporary heat allowance fuel allowance. That was in Ferguson Mechanicals. Our temporary allowance was like eighty thousand uh, dollars. Their their vendor was going to charge like two dollars and eighty four cents a gallon. So, um, speaking with Mike Lynch, you know, using the district's um, supplier for for propane, it was like a dollar seventy four. So we just took that um, from from uh, Ferguson Mechanical and. And then the district's actually doing it direct, you know, through, through yeah. Mike. So it would be said that these are these are pretty close mm -hmm. to being finalized and then subject for for our approval, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah, most of them uh, most of them are under that, you know, the hundred thousand dollar threshold. So yeah, it's they're close to approval for the. Well, yeah, I still want to make sure the committee's aware, even if we have the uh, construction oversight subcommittee ability to approve, I want to make sure the committee's aware and, and knows when we've approved something. So we haven't yes. done it yet. That's fine. I just want to make sure that we haven't, we're still in the approval process or waiting for all the, all the T's to be crossed and I's to be dotted. Okay, fine. Right. Yep. Anybody else have any questions about the progress report? Uh, hearing none, I'll move on to um, the next item, which is a uh, revised uh, proposed schedule for our regular meetings in 2022. Um, I basically went to the uh, same time of 10 a.m. to make sure that we would have uh, Dr. Forshaw's uh, appearance, because I think it's been important all the way through our process. And I went to Wednesday rather than Thursday. Uh, in order to make sure that Katie could uh, be involved. It's one less day uh, for you guys to get the uh, payment applications in, 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 the, in the hopper to us, but I'm told you guys can do it, go in GAP. So does anybody have any, I know that Rusty pointed out that the April 13th uh, meeting date happens to coincide, I believe with the school uh, Easter break, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Is that going to be a yeah. problem? No. I'm, I'm Not still a problem. Okay. I'm, so let's just keep it right there. It's consistent then. Um, do I have any uh, any objections then to this proposed schedule for our regular meeting schedule for 22? Hearing none, um, we'll just adopt it if we may as our schedule. That being the case, let's go on to the next item of business, which is uh, item number five, um, 
with his discussion about where we are in the bidding process for the furniture fixtures and equipment and what we do what we're doing with the technology and telephone equipment package. Amy. Okay. So we had a series of meetings starting in December and then ending last week with the state to get their review and approval of the uh, two upcoming packages, furniture, fixtures and equipment, um, and technology equipment. Um, Dr. Adley participated, uh, our uh, technology consultant participated, and our interior designer. And we were able to get both of those approved through the plan review re, um, approval process, um, which means that the furniture uh, piece, the, the furniture package, is approved for um, bidding. And so with that in mind, we are actually putting it out to bid today. Uh, you'll see in the Darien newspaper uh, uh, an advertisement for bids, and that also links to um, a ShareFile website that has all of the documents posted. And Amanda's been in touch with all of the vendors, so we're pretty confident that we'll get good um, results on that. Uh, bids will be due the end of this month, the 27th. For the technology equipment package, we can't put it out to bid until we have one more approval from the state and that is on the sole source approval letters. Um, so in order to keep your technology equipment um, in line and matching other schools in the district, um, there's a preference to not open that up to um, you know, equal vendors. So we had to go to the state for a separate approval for sole source um, procurement of that equipment. So that's uh, in the hopper now. Uh, it, it's with Kermit Thompson at the state who does those reviews. And so as soon as that gets approved, which we expect it will, uh, we will get the approval letter to go out to bid on that one as well. Uh, so that's my update. Amy, given uh, the fact that we have a, uh, um, we, we, we put an a advertisement in the paper today asking for bids and um, we have a two week requirement apparently under our town charter uh, to uh, have bids submitted. So it's the 27th of January, which is Thursday, that the bids will be submitted and, and opened. It'll all be done uh, online. Um, when do we think we'll be able to uh, actually award the contracts and, and place the orders for the furniture? So um, we'll do as quick of a turnaround as we can because time is of the essence due to the supply chain issues that we know exist in the world today. Um, so in, in order to meet the May uh, move in date, that's what you know we're hoping to just turn it around really quickly. So Amanda will review the bids immediately. Uh, most, like I mentioned, uh, she has spoken with vendors who are um, eligible to, to bid. Um, there are a couple of items that are actually coming from the state contract. So those will be easiest to review because that would be specifically what we are requesting. And then the others, if there is a, a substitution request that we need to process, um, she'll do that quickly. Okay. So Amy, she has she has no indication of anything that would impede setting up that school in turn in terms of supply chain right now based on her interaction with these vendors. That's correct. So I mean she's been talking with them regularly because that's how we got the budget numbers. Um, they're all aware of this coming out, and so you know I I all I can say is. At the moment, we're confident. <laughs> sure, I agree. It's it's literally day to day. Okay, thank you. Sure. Good. I think we talked about this the last meeting. Um, is there any ability to store our existing furniture until we take delivery of the new furniture, so that we're not caught with a unexpected delay? Well, there, there's the schools in session. I mean, this school is going to be set up while our school's in session, so there's no there's no overlap. Dan. Well, there, right. There is overlap, which is is uh, beneficial, so that you you won't be caught with no furniture. 
Yeah, I mean, we're setting up this school while school's in session, and we have the whole summer before we move kids into this school, so. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying, is that if for whatever reason, I mean, it might be a tiny probability, but if we're not moving the kids in until, right, until the fall, then we have all targeting. Stuff. I think we're targeting May ish for the new furniture to be in, right? And then the kids are still. I'm school. talking about the kids. I don't. I'm talking about moving the kids when the kids are going to start, and that's in the fall, correct? Correct. Correct. So if, we, if for whatever reason we have like an, a disruption in furniture delivery that causes us to not have new furniture for when the kids arrive. If we're that far delayed, is there any possibility that we're that far delayed? And if so, is there an ability to store what we've got over the summer to make sure that we have something for when the kids get back? I understand that we expect mm -hmm. furniture to be delivered in May. Yes, uh, sure. Dan, to answer your questions, Mike Lynch, we're, we're planning on storing the furniture in the existing Oxridge building. Um, and and our, our plan is even if the furniture arrives on time for the new building we're going to use that existing furniture to uh, replace any uh, older or damaged furniture in all of our other elementary schools so you know we're not just going to leave it in the building and let it get torn down with the building or anything like that our, our plan all along was to take that furniture lock stock and barrel out of that building and put it in storage um, and i will mention that first, you know, for the first year for the first year, we will be using some of that furniture, uh, in particular, some library furniture and cafeteria tables. Cafeteria furniture, yes. Gym in equipment. In the new like building. That, that will okay. be in the temporary um, spaces for library and uh, cafeteria. And then, of course, gym equipment will be reused and brought to the new building as okay. well. Okay. Sure. Any other questions for Amy on this particular uh, topic? Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, next, I wanted to ask uh, uh, Nick to talk about the uh, amendment, the small amendment to the SES contract. SES is our commissioning agent. Sure. Yeah, so when we rephase the project into the two separate phases, we never really addressed um, the commissioning going from one phase to two phase, so there's a little I'll say duplication of effort there uh, because of that. So we had a small additional service request from them um, to entertain that, which we've uh, reviewed and approved. It's again, at a less than 10% of the original um, contract. And essentially they'll have to remobilize to do some additional commissioning on the, the second half of the building, whether it's the exterior envelope or the mechanical systems, um, the generator, and, and a lot of the systems are coming online with phase one. So the commission them, at that time, and then I'll have to come back and recommission them once the whole project's complete. Um, so that's the gist of it. Again, a small service request for them, which we've, uh, the subcommittee reviewed and approved. Um, and about the it. amount was? I believe it was roughly 9,000. I could get the exact amount. It's 9,000, yes. Yeah. So it's a small amount, but I, I still think the, the committee ought to be aware when we make a, a contract change or, or an addendum to it. Yeah. And the, it was actually $8,000, sorry. It was actually what? $8,000? It was actually $8,000, yep. Sorry. No worries. Um, any questions about that? I think it's pretty straightforward, but we want to make sure the committee was aware of it. And then, and more questions, we have the final part, which is discuss the uh, recommend and approval of PCO 25. Now, what this amounts to, uh, I'll let George and, and Nick describe it, but the original PCO, which which we're asking for approval in total is about $114,000. We approve, the subcommittee approved payment for $61,000 because the other part, the other 41,000 or whatever it was, 52,000 had not been performed yet. So we approved the first part but I want the committee to look at and, and discuss and consider approving the entire uh, uh, proposed change order um, number 25, which is now on the screen encircled in red. George and Nick, please. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there are 
quite a few changes this summer related to the the site utilities work whether it was the water main and storm piping or ever source um so i think this you know encompasses a little bit of every of that um again i ran its gamut through slam and their consultants uh, with their review as well as ong so um once we finally got the approval from them subcommittee reviewed it again due to the threshold we thought it should go to the committee for full approval um you know, George could probably elaborate in a little more of the detail if, if anyone wants, but. Yeah, in the, yeah, like what Nick was saying, this is all related to the, um, you know, the revisions to the to the utilities. Um, the, the storm piping, that's actually, um, that's across uh, Mansfield Ave. So when, when, uh, when we relocated the, the electrical primary fee, um, you know, originally, you know, it was going to come on this side of the of Mansfield Ave off that existing pole, but then when you know EverSource came out and said, you know, you really can't, well, we can't um, come off that existing pole for for many reasons. He said, you know, we got to set a new pole across Mansfield Ave, and then that's going to be the new path for the primary. So in doing that, you know, we had to cross Mansfield Ave, coordinate with the DOT. So when DOT um, reviewed it they said we'd have to replace some storm piping across Mansfield Ave so that was you know part of this the 114 uh, and then the electrical primary revisions um you know that that's the work associated with um you know the the conduit and, and all of that and then there was some some miscellaneous items um you know some of the pavement you know we had to uh, uh patch over you know milk mansfield Ave, um parkings uh you know some walks and all that so that had to and then actually uh, relocate that loop detector and handhold so those those are kind of in the miscellaneous items so, so as um as kip was kind of saying you know just the electrical part was the like around sixty two thousand, but overall the the change order is, you know, the hundred. Mm -hmm. Nick said it's been vetted with with ourselves and the consultants and Slam and and all of that, you know, quite quite a bit actually. Yeah, Slam has been very diligent with with themselves and their consultants, you know, yes. really digging this one and vetting it so. So overall, what we're asking for is the committee to approve uh, the PCO number 25, which is on this screen shown as $114,579, covering the work that was just described earlier. Um, and therefore, um, can I have a motion to uh, approve the, uh, the PCO number 25 as presented? So moved. Rusty approves. Abus, is there a second? I'll second it, Duke. Duke seconds, okay. Is there any other discussion concerning this particular PCL? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by raising your hand or saying aye. Aye. Any, anyone uh, opposed, please raise your hand or say no. Any abstentions? The motion is carried, thank you. Uh, any other items to be brought before the committee today? I don't have any public comment that I'm aware of. Um, I just want to do a quick a quick thank you to uh, Scott Marlowe for today. Believe it or not, right before this meeting, he was good enough to meet with our um, fifth graders. We're doing a journalism unit and was able to come on in, give him some insights about the building, answer questions. Um, thank you also, Dave Crabbenzola. We're meeting today as well to talk about enrichment. Uh, for this for the school year, um, appreciative of their efforts, and just want to give them a public shout out. Thank you both. Don't embarrass them now. <laughs> they're good. They're good guys, and the kids get a lot from them. So I appreciate it. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Lou. Uh, anything else? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Dan moves. Do I have a second? I have a All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 aye.
I don't think there's any objections. Thank you all very much. Uh, we'll be meeting next uh, on in February on Wednesday then, the 9th. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thanks.